Okay, we started. We started. We've started. Uh, Sardosh played the D5 move. Uh, Benji now contemplating whether he wants to go with the Reti opening or whether he wants to go back into his old opening. The Queen's Gambit declined. And he chooses to go back to his old opening. I like this from Benji. We discussed that if he did this, Sardosh would feel tricked. And he, and he wouldn't get to use his uh, preparations that he made together with Nemo. Uh, so now Benji will need to rely on his uh, opening knowledge from two weeks ago. This is the opening Benji played two weeks ago. But this opening, Sardosh has never played this with the black pieces before. So we kind of tricked him out of his preferred opening. And now with the Slav defense, ooh, this is tricky. So Benji, I told Benji to play this e3 move when he goes for the Slav, but Benji instead goes for the bishop g5 because he doesn't remember what he was supposed to do. He only remembers this e6 variation. He's only supposed to play this bishop up when it's pointing down towards the queen. He could have been punished for this. He could have been punished with Sardosh coming up with a knight in the center. This would have been quite scary for Benji, but he gets saved because Sardosh plays um, more passively. Sardosh not in the mood to try and punish uh, Benji. Uh, and so Benji gets a nice uh, normal queen's gambit decline. And uh, we, I told Benji that he was, uh, I, I encouraged him uh, to try and take his time in the opening uh, more so than he has done in the past. He doesn't really seem like that tip uh, uh, ha has registered with him uh, because he's playing very, very quickly here. But in these positions, I'm, I'm sure Benji is more comfortable than Sardosh. Remember the prep. Well, this isn't really what we prepped, but it's, it's good enough. So we're out of preparation. Both players out of their prepared opening. But I believe that B Benji will be more comfortable with the situation that arises here. Uh, I hope Benji doesn't play this B3 move, but I think it's quite likely that he will. Uh, it's it's like a, a hangover he has from when we uh, actually now this move would be quite good so then now it's all fine other good p moves and plans for Benji is getting the rook into the middle and getting uh, the queen out connection between the queen and rooks um, wow this is like this is like a top level uh, this is such a top level strat. This position has been played in world championship matches 150 years ago. I kid you not. This is like a world championship uh, chess position right now. Okay, Benji gonna give up his bishop for the knight. No, he's not. Wow, Benji making sure he doesn't do the trade. Uh, because making that trade is not good when the other knight is ready to defend. Uh, I thought Benji was going to make this trade because we were studying some variations in which that trade was advantageous. But he he's his own man. Uh, he, and he's capable of making his own decisions. Uh, and, and here he goes protecting the bishop pair. Esco, wow. Esco, not even a chess player, uh, knows that this is the moment to use the uh, respect the bishop's emote. Wow, I'm very impressed with you, Esco. Esco came into chat like two weeks ago and he, he's a Fortnite uh, watcher uh, originally, but he is the one who knows precisely when to use the, 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 um, uh, the, the respect the bishop emotes. Wow. Okay. And Sardosh aggressive with a pawn on the side of the board. Great play from both players so far. Uh, I would like Benji to get his rook into the middle or get his queen up um, or trade in the middle. All of these moves are, are good. Uh, also, this queen move is good. Ooh, and Benji moves his pawn up. That is also a great move. Great, great move by Benji. Uh, Sardosh now needs to play his pawn forward in the middle. Number one, that's not even that good for black. Number two, um, it's, it's like a really tricky move to play. 
Honestly, that move from Benji was the best move in the position. I just didn't call it out because... I, I mean, I thought it was expecting too much from him. Okay, from now on, I'm, I'm only going to actually suggest the best moves, not the only the, the moves I think Benji is likely to play. Uh, ooh, maneuver. I don't like this move. Ooh, I don't like this move. Because if Benji moves the knight up next, then he will be hit with a double attack on the bishop and on the knight. Ooh, this is a very ominous move. Very ominous move from Benji. Uh, this knight, I think he's intending to move it further up the board, which would be a huge mistake. Okay, but now Benji, oh no, oh no. I forgot that Benji has had a problem with this previously. He has had trouble identifying that when the knight moves, it opens an attack on the bishop. Ooh, but he's seen it. He saw it. This Benji is not the Benji from three weeks ago. Three weeks ago, he would have blundered that bishop. But now he's on point. And now, honestly, this knight maneuver is looking pretty good. Uh, this maneuver is looking pretty good. Maybe get the knight over here. Uh, that's a pretty good move. Uh, also good move, moving the pawn on the side. This would be, like, the best move. Um, also good move, moving the pawn over here. We, we got a couple of good moves in the position. Uh, Benji definitely has the advantage. Um, uh, but he, now he's spending his time, which I think is good. Uh, he has seven minutes on the clock. Plenty of time. There's nothing to stress about. Just t take your time and find a plan you're happy with. A changed man. Yes, wingman. Okay, so Benji gets the rook in towards the middle. I like it. I, I, Good play. Good play. Giving protection to your own pawn. And if Sardosh now pushes the pawn in the middle, then Benji is just going to capture this and get his knight up and make some attacks. This is like superb play from Benji. Okay, Sardosh instead moving his knight up. Bad move. Bad move. Takes away Black's control of the e5 square. Benji now has the opportunity to move the knight up in the middle. A very, very strong move for Benji because the knight will then attack the pawn on the side. Um, Benji has a much better position. Benji has played so well so far. Notice how all of Black's p pawns are on the light squares. So all of these pawns are kind of blocking in the bishop. The bishop has nothing to do really. And notice how Benji is comfortable having this pressure against uh, the black knight. He, he's not stressing at all. Uh, he's moving his knight up, which I don't like this move. Because the knight has nowhere to go uh, next. But um, overall, Benji still with a, with a solid advantage in this game. Uh, black's pawns are gro gross. But uh, uh, Sardosh trying to fix that. So Sardosh is trying to move his pawns up to the dark squares so that he can open up for his bishop. Very good move from Sardosh. Very, very good move. Benji needs to move his knight up. Benji needs to have some aggression before Sardosh gets to um, uh, complete his plans. Okay, Benji going for the trade. Um, I'm not a fan of this. Yeah, Sardosh avoiding the trade, now getting ready to get the bishop to trade with Benji's bishop. Uh, Sardosh has fixed his problem uh, of what to do with this bishop. Uh, but it's okay. It's okay. Benji is still better. Coming in with the knight, putting uh, in the threat against the pawn on c6. Good move from Benji. It would have been even better if he had played this move earlier. But one of the advantages of this move is that now afterwards he can push his pawn forward and try to chase Black's knight. So Benji still with a very advantageous position. Uh, Slumka says this position is great for Benji. Sardosh excels in tactical tricky positions. Whereas this one is very strategic. Yes, so we see a bit of a clash of styles. 
Benji, very much a strategic player. Um, almost no exchanges on the board. No pawns have disappeared, which means it's uh, it's uh, when there's lots of pawns still on the board, it means that it's all about creating a good plan. And Benji now, if he moves his pawn forward, he will attack Black's knight. Uh, and he will have a very good position. Good move from Benji, attacking the knight. Sardosh is going to move forward, uh, attacking the queen. Benji now needs to defend the queen, needs to move the queen. I get nervous any time something can be captured. Just don't blunder. Don't blunder the queen. Okay, Benji moves the queen. Both players, five minute le minutes left on the clock. Ooh, Sardosh, very good move. He appreciates that the knight was causing a lot of trouble for black. So he goes in for the trade. Actually, if Benji had moved his queen here, then, then he could have followed up this by doing a very spectacular knight attacks both king and queen. I didn't even notice that until I now started thinking about what if, what if. But as the position stands, Sardosh was absolutely correct. He needs to get Benji's knight traded off. I think Benji also needs to get the... And Benji plays the best move. Benji plays the best move. He has identified this black knight on uh, e, uh, C3. He identified that knight as a problem. So he came in with his knight to attack it. Uh, Sardosh makes the trade. Now Benji should take back with the queen. Yes, because now Benji has two pieces pointing up against this a6 square. So Sardosh is unable to get his bishop traded off. So far, this is like a 2000 rated game. I'm not even kidding. These players have not made any mistakes so far. And Benji with the white pieces at, at 2000? I don't know what I'm saying. More than that. Benji's playing like a grandmaster right now. Benji's play has been pretty much completely flawless. His opponents must be so terrified. We have created a monster. Benji is playing like a more than a 2000 rated player. Akeev, somebody said that you qualified for FNCS. Congrats, man. We got a lot of winners from the Benji stream today. Oh, and Benji comes up with a pawn. I don't, I don't even believe this. Is he cheating? What is going on here? He's playing perfect chess. He's playing such perfect. And look at Sardosh. Sardosh is playing so well. As, <laughs> he's going for the bishop trade. Sardosh identified that he needed two pieces. He needs to trade off the worst placed piece he has in his position. And now he's getting his rooks. Seemingly, this looks so stupid, right? With the rooks pointing up against the pawn. But he just knows he needs to complete this trade of the bishops. Benji is playing incredible chess, but so is Sardosh. Both players doing really well, and now Benji is the one to make the first mistake. Benji getting too aggressive here on the right-hand side. Sardosh has played very, very well in defense. He's basically just waiting for, for Benji to make a mistake, to make a breakthrough. And now Benji has made that mistake, because now the Black Queen is pointing up against Black's pawn in the middle. Temporarily, Benji protects that pawn with his rook, but Sardosh can use his pawn to kick the rook, after which the pawn in the middle will be captured. Both players just amazing play so far, but Benji kind of, Benji got stuck because he, he made all of his perfect plans and then he didn't really know how to move forward. And, and he started making aggression too soon. But on the other hand, if Benji now just pu pushes his pawn, uh, his rook up and starts an attack with his rooks against this pawn on f7, and then if Sardosh tries to defend, maybe, maybe Benji, oh, actually here Benji can take a pawn. But Benji can also like try to sacrifice and start some kind of an attack against Black's king. Benji now the underdog, uh, but he's definitely still got opportunities in this game. Uh, he needs to move the rook one step forward, though. He really needs this rook move uh, to kind of get inside Black's position and just be a menace. Uh, 
Uh, okay, he chooses to move the rook back. Uh, Sardoge is going to take the pawn in the middle, but then Benji's going to get uh, Benji's going to get a lot of pieces pointing down towards Black's king. Also, Queen F2. Uh, whatever you do, Benji, start attacking this pawn. Okay, Benji has done just that. Sardoge will move his bishop back, try and get this bishop into a defensive position. Yeah, bishop back. I don't see a good move for Benji after that. Okay, Sardosh makes a big blunder. Sardosh with a big, big blunder. Benji gets the opportunity for the win. Benji has an opportunity to win this game. Benji can capture the pawn in front of Black's King. Because if the pawn takes back, then the, the rook can take the other rook. And it's a protection from the rooks. And in, in this variation, Sardosh gets checkmated by the two white rooks. Okay, huge opportunity here for Benji. But it's a very difficult tactic. This is why we're on the puzzle. Oh my God. <laughs> and Sardosh is defending brilliantly in return. Sardosh finds the absolutely best defensive move using his bishop to point down against Benji's queen. Benji's only way to defend now is to move the bishop back into defense. Benji has found so many good moves so far but I'm not sure he's gonna see this one. Maybe he's gonna see it because he's concerned about his bishop and the rook on the same diagonal. This is where Sardosh excels. This is supposed to be like Sardosh's territory. When it starts becoming tricky, when there's lots of captures, that's when Sardosh is just better, just better than Benji. And Benji needs to move his bishop back into defense. I, I don't think he's going to find it. But on the other hand, I didn't think he was going to find this move either. Benji, no matter whether he wins or loses this game, has played an amazing game of chess. It's just that Sardosh is so good. Both players have played well beyond their rating. They've, they've simply played an excellent game of chess. And Benji now needs to find this bishop's retreat. But the fact that he's spending so much time means that he probably doesn't see it. Okay, he didn't see it. And now Sardosh can take the rook. And Benji's going to be down a rook for a bishop. Although, honestly, even down a rook for a bishop, Benji has chances here. Because Sardosh's king is not very well defended. I mean, Benji just played strategic chess like a 2200 rated player. But when it comes to the trickery, he's a bit weaker. So, so that's what we need to work on. Ooh, Sardosh, such a good move. Defending the rook while also attacking Benji's pawn. But this must be said. If Benji now moves the bishop back, if Benji just moves the bishop back into defense, Sardosh might be tempted to take this pawn on the side. But then it's a checkmate. It's a checkmate on Black's king. All of these white pieces coming into the attack. Uh, so if Benji just moves his bishop back, okay, uh, Benji moved the bishop back, kind of in the wrong direction, but the same trick applies. If, if Sardosh takes Benji's pawn, then Benji will start an attack with his rook against Black's king. Big moment here. Is Sardosh going to take this pawn? Okay, Benji, 38 seconds. Sardosh, two minutes. Sardosh. Oh, and he makes the mistake. He makes the mistake. Benji has the opportunity now to use the queen to attack the black king. Benji with a checkmate. Benji has a checkmate in four moves. Benji comes with a rook. Benji coming in with a rook. Benji has 30 seconds left, but he has checkmate in two moves. He can get the queen in. He can get the queen in. It's a checkmate. It's a checkmate. Oh my gosh. Benji Fishy coming in with a checkmate. What a game. What a game. Are you kidding me?
me, me th with 30 seconds left on the clock. Benji wins the game. Benji wins the game. He's taken down Sardosh. He's taken down Sardosh. Benji. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Did you guys see this opening play? F from both players, honestly. Look at this plan. Rook a7. Rook a7 to get the other rook over there to be make the bishop trade? Honestly, that's a 2200 rated play from, from Sardosh as well. Both players played this amazingly well. Amazingly well. I just cannot get... I... I cannot believe this game. This game was unbelievably good from both players. I think apart from like some mistakes they made, most of the game they played like 2,000 rated players. I'm not even kidding. Uh, but I am Benji's coach, uh, which is why I am so proud of him right now. And we are having uh, daily uh, chess lessons. Uh, so uh, make sure you uh, follow. Uh, and subscribe if you do have a, an available Twitch Prime. Um, and, and, um, uh, and watch us uh, as we try to make Benji uh, good also for the uh, last, uh, last knockout stage of this tournament. Okay, next game has started. Benji is playing incredibly quickly. I would like him to slow down a little bit. But he knows his opening and he's not afraid to tell his opponent, I know what I'm doing right now. Uh, oh, Benji coming out with a pawn on the side. If you blunder your bishop, I will never forgive you. Okay, Benji now. Okay, should have played the pawn up first. We had this discussion that he should move his pawn forward first. But he has done the plan we practiced. Uh, he's put the two bishops up against each other. And now Sardosh may have to give away that treasured London system opening. Uh, a big shout out here to uh, Bola TW, uh, who played this exact situation against Benji in practice games. Uh, but Benji uh, denied the bishop trade, which is why he should have played his pawn up earlier. But now he's moving the pawn up. I really would like Benji to get his king into safety. I'm not comfortable with Benji's king where it is right now. Would like some castling here. Because now Sardosh has a really good move with the queen to attack Benji's uh, king. Uh, okay, Sardosh misses out on that opportunity. Uh, Benji really should have castled earlier. Um, but And he's playing way too quickly in the opening. Um, but now he's slowed down a little bit. He's probably so uh, crazy after that first game. To be honest, we all are. I, I still haven't calmed down. But Benji gets his king to safety. Good move. Good move from Benji. Uh, the bishop out, pointing down towards the queen. We discussed this. We discussed this in our preparations. Benji... The preparation comes good. That is very nice. Benji uh, uh, avoiding that threat with the bishop against the queen by putting his own bishop to block. Now Benji is available to start capturing stuff in the middle. Capturing on d4 is the first order of business. This is the pawn structure Benji has struggled with a little bit because he struggles with this uh, complete tension between the pawns. Uh, it, it's going to be exciting to see how he how he handles it. I just watched you prep this. Yes, you did. Opening prep pays off. Oh, Sardosh with his knight threatening Benji's knight. Benji has blundered this piece several times before. But Benji does have a good move here. He can just make the trade. Ooh, Benji blunders. Ooh, Benji blunders. Benji makes a mistake. Now Sardosh can capture Benji's knight because when the queen takes back, Sardosh can capture in the middle, which both opens an attack against Benji's queen, but also opens up an attack between the bishop. And Sardosh is so incredibly good at these uh, things. No, he misses out on the opportunity. 
he misses out on the opportunity, but the bishop pointing down towards Benji's queen, it's still bad news. It's, it's still bad news for Benji's queen right now. Benji using his bishop to point up against this white bishop. Uh, Sardosh had another opportunity to win the game, but he misses out on it. Sardosh misses out on two tricky ways he could win the game. And now Benji is definitely back in it. Benji needs to capture these pawns as soon as possible. Benji needs to stop having the tension between the pawns. It doesn't suit you, Benji. You're not really good with it. You miss a lot of opportunities when there is these pawns that always can capture your pawns. It's tricky to play with. How about you just eliminate those and start capturing pawns and get some of them off the board? Yes! That's what I'm talking about. Benji only needs a draw in order to win this matchup. Uh, and with this latest move, he has uh, equalized the position. Uh, he's now going to make the trade of bishops. Good move. And then he's going to trade in the middle. Benji going to get his rook into the middle, pointing up against white's pawn. Benji has a superior position. There was a moment there where Benji could have lost if Sardosh had played the right move. But Sardosh didn't find it. And now it's back to being all about Benji. Benji can get his rook into the middle. He can also capture the pawn uh, in the middle. Either move is good. Uh, Benji has successfully stopped the London opening. The London opening is no longer anything to be concerned about. Benji has the antidote. And he's executing it in this match. Sardosh is nervous? Yeah, probably. I, I think they're both nervous. Ooh, Benji coming in with a rook. Great move. And very tricky move. Because if Sardosh now captures Benji's pawn, then Benji has the opportunity to capture the white knight. Because if this bishop moves to recapture that bishop, we see the rook and the queen has miraculously uh, come up on the same file. Which means this rook can capture white's queen and game over. Uh, so Sardoge now sees that Benji is putting pressure on this pawn, pawn in the middle. But at the same time, he understands that making the trade is not good. So Sardoge instead moving his bishop back. Now Benji has the opportunity to win this game. Benji can win this... Um, pause. Grandmaster calculating. Yes! Benji can win this game. Benji can win this game if he captures the pawn on d4 and then uses his bishop to capture. Or even better, if he takes with the bishop first and then captures in the middle. That might be, yeah, that might be a better version of what I was calculating. Benji with the opportunity now, uh, basically to just start capturing stuff. Okay, instead, Benji chooses to make a blunder. Okay, Benji moving his pawn up, putting pressure in the middle. Um, honestly, not a bad idea, but the problem is that white has three pieces uh, against this pawn. Uh, so that means uh, Benji doesn't really get away with it. Uh, if he wanted to play this move, he really needed to capture first, and then he can make that move. Because now he eliminated the knight that had pressure on this e5 square. Um, and yeah... Sardosh doesn't let that opportunity slip and he captures in the middle and now Benji once again has a losing position I they Benji has gotten really good at chess but he's no one can be perfect in just a month and a half of training and now if Benji captures in the middle he will get shut down by this rook coming in to attack both the queen and the knight so yeah Benji currently, that, that was a, a big mistake he made uh, with the pawns in the middle. Uh, and, uh, and now he has a losing position. Engine says it's equal. I don't believe that for a second. If the rook... Oh! Sardosh makes a mistake. Sardosh makes a mistake. Benji now has the opportunity to push his pawn forward. It's a very, very difficult move to make. It's much more natural to capture the knight, but then Sardosh will have the opportunity to go up a pawn in the middle. So, yeah, Benji takes the knight, and now Sardosh will take the pawn. 
the Frenchman up a pawn in this game. Uh, a pawn in a Pog Champs game normally has no significance, but these two players are playing at such a high level that a pawn could be the difference between a win and a loss. Do you think Benji can win here? Uh, yes, I think Benji can win. Not the game, but he can win the match. So if Benji manages to salvage a draw uh, from this position down a pawn, then he will win the match because he won the first game. So Benji winning this game is off the table now. He had an opportunity, he let it slip. But uh, he still has a chance uh, to win the match because he can, he can try to survive down, down a pawn. One of the main problems here is not the fact that white is a pawn up. It's the fact that that pawn, white has extra, is doing a fantastic job of defending the knight in the middle. So Benji really facing an uphill battle here. Why not the game? Sardosh can still blunder. It's unlikely. It's unlikely that Sardosh will blunder. How's Benji's endgame? His endgame is pretty good, Groger. But it's not an endgame yet. The queens are still on the board. Which means Sardosh can try to create some attacking chances. Sardosh's king is weaker? No. Sardosh's king is safer than Benji's. Because Sardosh has four pawns uh, standing next to each other, protecting the king. Whereas Benji only has three. Uh, so for that reason, uh, Sardosh's king is more safe. Should Benji move a pawn in front of his king? Yes, Tail. Uh, he definitely should. He should move his pawn up one step. So that he has breathing space for the king and doesn't fall for any back rank checkmates. I like the idea to reroute the knights. Um, it's an okay idea, but I would have preferred if Benji played his pawn up. And then his queen into the middle. Because um, now I'm kind of nervous about something happening here. And kind of nervous about Benji's king. Uh, okay, Benji now with a big opportunity. Benji with a big opportunity. I don't know what this move is. I don't like this move from Sardosh. It doesn't really do anything. Benji now has the opportunity to put pressure on this black rook with his knight. And if that rook moves, then Benji can use his knight to put pressure on white's knight in the middle. And if Sardosh captures then Benji can get his rook up and attack both the queen and king. Okay, and Benji has played this move. Benji uses his knight to attack white's rook. Very good move from Benji. Uh, he definitely still has chances to make a draw here. Okay, Sardosh moves the rook back, but now Benji can move his knight back as well. Benji can just keep attacking this rook with his knight. Can Benji go back and forth? Yes, and he should. He should do so. Going back and forth. If you go back and forth three times, the game is declared a draw. Okay, but Benji chooses instead to uh, create an escape route for his king. Also happy with that move. I think if he was going to do anything other than moving his knight back, making an escape for the king was very important. Okay, and now Sardosh is doing his plan. I guess he's moving up this pawn afterwards. Honestly, another good move for Benji is just moving the knight back. Trying to get lots of, lots of trades. Which sounds counterintuitive, but the problem is that this knight in the middle is, is so strong that even though you normally don't want to exchange pieces when you're down, it could be okay to do it in this instance uh, because that knight is so strong. If this game uh, is, uh, uh, is a win for the Frenchmen, then we will go to a Armageddon game where white gets five minutes, black gets four minutes, and in case of a draw, uh, the game is declared a win for black. But 
Uh, before we get to that point, we need to see if Sardosh is able to win this game. Uh, and now he's coming in with his knight, threatening Benji's rook. And this is very, very scary for Benji. Sardosh has made a masterful plan. Sardosh coming in with a very clever plan here. Benji going to go for the double trade. Benji is also going to take this pawn. Because he thinks since he's down a pawn, he might as well win one back. But the problem is, Sardosh has some scary intentions here. With the queen and with the knight. Sardosh coming in with the knight. With a check of che threat of checkmate. It's a checkmate threat against Benji. Benji only has one possible defensive move. Benji needs to find this pawn forward so that the queen, all the way from the other side of the board, is defending towards the g8 square. And this is, I think, almost an impossible move for Benji to find. He's also being pressured on time. Really, really good play there from Sardosh, using his experience with trickiness, with those tacticals. Uh, Sardo showing why he has a better puzzle rating than Benji with the threat of stalemate. Benji only has one move and it's so difficult to find because you have to move a pawn in order to get your queen into the game. Benji needs to be able to see that his queen would be activated if he moves uh, his pawn. I, I, I don't, yeah, I don't see Benji finding this move. And even if he does find it, he's in so much trouble. Because then the pawn is going to come, attacking the knight. And, and basically all of Black's pieces are stuck on, well, for you guys, it's this side of the board. Um, so I, I don't, I think that Black King is defenseless. Even if Benji finds the perfect move, which is already very difficult to find, I think he's defenseless. Yeah, and Sardosh coming in with a checkmate and three moves. Wow, we're going to have a tied match. We're going to have an Armageddon. What a way to decide this matchup. And Sardosh blunders his queen. He blunders his queen. He had a checkmate in two moves and he blunders his queen. Oh my gosh. And Benji takes it. Benji has two old Sardosh. Benji has two old Sardosh. Oh my gosh. Benji takes down the pre-tournament favorite in stunning fashion. When Sardosh thought he had everything under control, Benji's queen comes to the rescue. Sardosh had a checkmate in two moves, but instead, now he's going to have to resign this game. Benji wins. Benji wins. Benji is the best player in this Pog Champs tournament. Benji has defeated a 1450 rated player twice in a row. Sardos just resigns. Benji has won. Benji has won. Benji has won. You can't make this drama up. No one can come in and create fiction out of this. Wow. Wow. What a drama. What a drama. Sardosh did have the opportunity here to go for a checkmate in two moves. Will these two meet in the final? It's looking pretty probable, Benevitan. It's looking pretty probable. Uh, Benji is looking really strong and Sardosh uh, still had great opportunities in this match. Both players were winning in both of the games. Uh, so keep that in mind. That both players had huge opportunities during this match. I'm, I'm thinking about semi-finals now. That's how hyped I am. <laughs> I'm thinking about the semi before the semifinals there is a quarterfinal. Benji has qualified for the knockout stages. Benji has won every single game. Um 
And I started thinking about the semifinals, but there is a quarterfinal as well. Just let's let's keep that in mind. Hello? Hey, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm alright. I'm alright. Yeah, no no kidding, huh? <laughs> well, what, what do you think? You know, I played pretty good? Uh, I mean, you're going to be on the puzzle grind. <laughs> I mean, I, I thought I, I did all right, no? I, I think you did amazing. Right, nice. You're still going to be yeah. on the puzzle grind. Yeah, obviously, but like still. I, I, do, I don't know how I, I somehow won to. I don't know how that's even possible. I, I... <laughs> the, the first game you played was uh. unbelievable. Yeah. It was so good. It was from it was both just of I you. The form. Yeah, but it was from both of you. Both of you yeah. played so well. Mm -hmm. It was and and some of the tactics you had, like the, the bishop takes that you saw you could take good. the pawn in front of the king. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was pretty good. That was that was so good. Nice. That was really, really good. Yeah, I I don't know, I don't like like the the second game, I don't like how I won just because he blundered his queen. You know, I feel like if, if it was like pretty cheap, that's the that's the thing. Like, obviously, like he shouldn't have made the mistake, but it's like, uh, like I should I should have just lost in it. Yeah. yeah. Which is why you're gonna have to go on the puzzle grind, so that that yeah. doesn't happen again in the final. Yeah. But for now, there's nothing wrong in celebrating and also the fact that you know he did make that mistake yeah i, I was so confused i was I, <laughs> oh it was yeah i was i was so lucky I, I, was i was i guaranteed checkmate when he when he uh moved his queen and or when he moved his knight whatever and i pushed my pawn up was that like just like guaranteed mate like, uh no it was very dangerous for you but you could have postponed it a couple of moves Oh, you could have moved your your pawn forward so that your queen from kind of points backwards into defense uh, I, I don't know how to explain it to you without the board in front of us whatever. but um you, you could have maybe i i think you would have been in big trouble regardless yeah i i saw that he could check with his queen but i kind of just i didn't think he would be able to check yeah Yeah, I, no. thought, I thought I played pretty good, considering, yeah. especially because I haven't played in like two days. Yeah. So, yeah, not bad, not bad. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. It's good, good confidence boost though, good confidence boost. Yeah, you've just won every single competitive chess game you have ever played. Yeah, that's true, that is true. I cannot emphasize enough how well you played in that first game. Yeah, I I, I thought I played the main game pretty good because my plan was because I saw he wanted to to like push on the queen side, so I closed it, and then I wanted to uh start going uh on the on the king side. Yeah. Uh, which is what I was able to do, which is pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I, I want to really... see. Uh. I want to see. Uh. <laughs> uh hikari's reaction because you remember Ukiri, oh yeah uh, he's uh, going overrated. over the game right now really no no i just want to see his react he, he was he was doing a viewing fight i want to see his reaction because oh. he called me overrated when i played against smith yeah yeah <laughs> so you're gonna leave to watch that i'm, I'm gonna go watch the vod yeah okay <laughs> enjoy your victory well done uh, amazing play you. yeah see you tomorrow see ya. Bye. Okay, that was Benji Fishy, who has just won two games in a row.